we're doing a mini PC showdown. We did one a little while ago, and this is an updated one because I've got myself a few additions, and these are great. All right, now you're gonna probably be asking yourself, well, what is the point of one of these little computers? I mean, I've got another computer and it's more than fine. Why do I need to get something small? Now, there's a few things that you can do with these little computers. I mean, firstly, they're tiny, they're great. Look at them, they're so small that you can put them anywhere. They're low power, but because they're small, they also may not have the punch of some of the bigger computers, maybe some of your laptops, some of your desktops. You could install Plex directly onto one of these things, hook it up to your TV, really, really cool. If you wanna get pretty techy, you could set it up as a firewall, as a proxy, something that is monitoring the security on your network. And also set them up in like a home lab environment, which is what I love. I love home labs, it's essentially a space where I can build stuff, I can destroy stuff, I can play around with stuff, and then run multiple virtual computers within them. Oh, and remember, if you are not subscribed, you need to do something. You need to smash that subscription button. Don't smash it, click on it with your mouse or with your finger if you're on a smartphone. We release videos every week, and if you click on that little bell, you'll be notified when new stuff comes out. So please do that. What have we got? These are called Intel NUCs. Now these are something that's been around for a very, very long time. Like they make CPUs and things like that. Well, they actually also make computers. They're small, they're powerful, you can open them up, you can really customize these, and they come in, hey, different CPU configurations, slower CPUs, faster CPUs, really depending on the speed that you are looking for. Now, these things are amazing, and they have been the leader for a very, very long time, but there's a whole lot of others that are creeping up, so Intel should be a bit scared because some of these other ones that we're gonna be looking at today compete pretty well against the Intel NUC. I've got VMware's ESXi running onto these, version seven and version eight on one of the other ones, and then I can just plug them them into my network and build virtual machines of all different shapes, sizes, and configurations to my heart's delight. Then we've got this other device that's by a brand called Protectly, and this just looks like a really big heatsink. And essentially what this doesn't have is a fan. A little bit bigger than the NUX, but also does pack a fair bit of a punch. Four gigabit ethernet points, up to 2.5 gigabit ethernet NIC ports, which is so cool. Comes with quad core CPU up to 2.7 gigahertz. It also comes with Wi-Fi built into the unit with a couple of antennas. And because it has a big old heatsink on the top, it is completely silent. There is no fans for this unit, but this unit is sturdy, it's hard, it's metallic, it's heavy, it feels really, really good quality. I set this up again with VMware's virtualization technology so that I can install ESXi and build a pool of Windows Linux boxes so I can really get the most out of this unit. We've got a tiny one here. This is by a brand called Umbrel. This is the Umbrel Home. And look at it, it is so small. I mean, if you've ever looked at any other sorts of mini computers. Well, this is probably one of the smaller ones. It's really, really simple to use. You literally just plug it in and then you can log into it and it's got a fully built operating system running Linux in the back end. All I did was open up a web browser from any device, from any computer, and I went to umbrella.local and I set it up. You have an amazing Umbrella app store that you can just browse and grab whatever you want. Ones that I love is the Home Assistant. Essentially manage your home. If you do smart home stuff, if you wanna do any form of monitoring on some of your gear, you wanna run Plex, you can run Plex. You wanna set up some security with Pi-hole, you can do that. And one app that I love is up to Time Kuma, where you can easily monitor the uptime, the downtime of the devices on your network. And then one of my favorites is by a company called Goen, and they essentially do custom computers, custom little computers, and this thing has ports absolutely everywhere. This one is the R86S, and look at this thing. You've got big fans on the top. You've got ports absolutely everywhere everywhere. This one comes with 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports. Not one, not two, but three of them. You've also got a couple of SFP slots. How amazing is this? You can add additional SFP modules, get 10 gigabit ethernet, throw in some fiber channel. It is so cool. And then a whole range of other ports on the sides so that you can run additional peripherals into them, screens, all of the above. Comes with built-in Wi-Fi, has an Intel chip. This one came with 32 gig of RAM, and this thing is incredible. It will run a whole bunch of your operating systems, your Windows, your Linux, even your virtualization platforms. You can open this thing up and add additional storage to it as well. This is probably one of my favorites because it has so many options to me. Now, for my purposes, I got Windows Server 2022 running onto this box. I wanted to take advantage of all of the processing power 
directly out of the box. And I actually used it to set up a domain controller with DNS so that I could actually add it into my pool of other DCs that are already in my home lab. And this thing is incredible. Now this one is awesome just to have around in any home environment. This is the B-Link Mini S. Comes with an Intel processor, DDR4 RAM, Wi-Fi. My CPU came with 3.4 gigahertz. I got 16 gig of RAM, up to two terabytes of storage, dual displays, support for 4K. It has everything. Now I've got this installed with Windows 11, running my CCTV environment. Now the Elite Desk has been around for a very, very long time. HP, of course, you know them. They do a lot of stuff. So you know that this thing is gonna be good. Now my one is a little bit older, but the newer ones are up to Gen 9 now. i7, 4.9 gigahertz, 16 gig of RAM, and a whole bunch of SSD storage. Customize this really to whatever specs that you want. Because it's a little bit bigger, you can beef it up even that little bit more. Me personally, I've got this one also running with VMware's ESXi. It is great, it is powerful. I've got a Mac. This is a Mac Mini, which I'm sort of going to add into the group of mini PCs because it is a mini PC running the Mac operating system. Now, although you can remove Mac OS from this, which is what I've done in the past, I've installed ESXi, VMware, or I can even run Windows, uh, the Mac is brilliant because it just comes out of the box. It just works. Mac, of course, Apple are really good at marketing the thing to be really, really easy to use, and it is. And it's one of those perfect companions that you can add into your environment, hook it up onto the back of your TV, run Plex, run all your videos, run your web browsing, all from this one single device. And of course, because it's Apple, it's designed really, really well. Beautiful, sleek design. I love them. Now, let me tell you about this thing, the Zimmer board. It is a single board server. Wow, this is so cool. It looks like a, just a big old heatsink, but it's not a heatsink. It's got a quad core CPU up to 2.2 gigahertz, dual gigabit ethernet. Now all these ports are on the outside to run additional hard drives. SATA hard drives right on the outside, PCI Express cards right on the outside of the board. So it's like a built-in motherboard heatsink all in one. This is brilliant because you can set it up with your own VPN, set it up as a firewall, set it up as a home server, media server, a NAS, whatever your heart's content. In my case, I've installed Linux Ubuntu onto it and it is just a cool little device. I've got it running with PFSense, which is like a open source firewall. This thing is awesome. You gotta go check one of these things out. And then no, this last one, it is not a Nintendo. This is actually a standard old Raspberry Pi 4, but I wanted it to go into a little case that had a fan, and I think it looks pretty cool. And of course, the Raspberry Pis have been around for a whole bunch of time. They come in different configurations, different setups, and these things are just small, they're tiny. Now look, they're not gonna be extremely beefy, but that's not the point. They're really made for creators, for developers, for people who want something small, easy, compact, little, you can just put it in a small little spot and do whatever you want with it. They're awesome. Now here's the thing, if you came watching and expecting me to just tell you which one is the best, uh, well, I'm not gonna tell you exactly which one is the best because they all have their pros and cons. They all have their benefits, right? I could say, look, out of, out of the grunty ones, you could put a lot of RAM inside of it and give it a pretty good processor It'll do the job, but it'll cost you a fair bit. And it's also a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier, and it's gonna run a little bit hotter, which means it's gonna use a little bit more of your electricity. But then you can go for something smaller, like a Raspberry Pi. I mean, the Raspberry Pis is a reason why these things are so popular. They're super tiny, you can put them anywhere, but you're also not gonna get the grunt out of them. If you just want something simple, if you have a specific thing that you're wanting to do, let's say, for example, all you wanna do is you just wanna play some videos. You want it to become your media server. Home automation stuff, control some of your monitoring to make sure your network's running healthy. Then something like the Umbrella, which is super tiny, straight out of the box, it just works. Some of the other ones, you'll have to go and configure them. Some of the other ones do not come with an operating system at all, but they all have different ports, right? They all have different things that you may want to run into. If you want a whole bunch of the ethernet points and you want to have the ability to have SFP modules and add additional functionality to it with ease, then the R86S is probably gonna be the one that you're gonna look for. So why don't you let me know what you think? I mean, have you tried any of these? Have you played with any of these? Are you thinking about getting one of these? Let us know down below in the comments. would love to know. And you remember to click on that button. Do not forget, do not forget before this video ends to click on that subscription button, click on the bell so you don't miss out on anything. And stay tuned for the next video where we continue talking about all things tech. We'll talk to you then.